Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. They won't put eating on here, so we start shivering. So, from a mining village, aren't we? We don't need eating when we've got big coats. So, it is what it is, isn't it? I'm only joking. Uh, I'm just waiting for this new guy making his debut on Porky's Corner. Uh, he's having a few tech issues yet again. But it is where it is, so I hope you're all right. So, right, let's get him on then. Let's get him on. How you doing, Sean? How you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm sure you now, so nice to have you on the show. You've got some questions for me, haven't you? You see me face, Bobby? I see you, yeah. Nice to meet you in person at last. Yeah. How are you doing? Big boxing fan, Sean. Hardcore like you, mate. You're the face of hardcore boxing, aren't you? I'm on the face of summer, aren't I? Well, my you've got me saying that you'll know, you'll know how my mates are saying it now. And really? I've got six people to subscribe to your channel because it's fucking great, mate. You're a realist. Thank you very much. Right. Uh, great to be on at last. Yeah, it is, yeah. It's nice. Because I'm a bit of a mongrel when it comes to technology. Yeah. I'm special. Uh, nice to put a, uh, a face to the, to the computer. Right, so what would you like to talk about, uh, Sean? I'd like to start off with heavyweights first, please, if I could, Russ. Yeah, no problem, fire away. Well, I, I've just watched the podcast last night where you were with that man from Birmingham. He seems a very knowledgeable man. In, yeah. Pretty That's interesting. Book. And he mentioned something about, a lot of people have been asking the same questions, but we'll start off with Joshua Puel, have you? Yeah. Your friend from Birmingham said, uh, what I've been saying for a long time. Anthony Joshua, do you think that he's like Frank Bruno when he gets hit? Yeah, I do, yeah, a little bit, yeah. Because he goes, I, I noticed something on the Vladimir Klitschko fight, and my girlfriend will be inside of me. I'm not a betting man, but I want to bet on Andy Ruiz. I've seen most of his fights. And I thought he'd never been tested, but uh, when he takes a shot, he goes stiff like Frank Bruno, and in the fifth round against Klitschko, he were, uh, I just saw something in him what's very like Frank Bruno, and you, mate, we're going on about, you were going on about conditioning yesterday. And do you think it's down to uh, the muscle mass and the genetics? When they get it, do you think is that why they go stiff? Because they're too big. Because Frank Bruno had a similar physique to Anthony Joshua. Uh. Maybe, maybe it's that. I think Joshua's a good fighter. I think he will probably struggle against somebody like Frank Bruno. Because that, I think Frank Bruno was a very underrated fighter. Exactly, I don't say. What it was, Russell, it's when fighters go up to that level in America. And once, no against it, I was going to go on about Kel Brook. Kel Brook saying, if you're not dedicated in boxing and you don't live it and breathe it, you get fan out of the t at the elite level. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Because uh, I was talking to Dom. I dropped on Dominic Ingle in Meadowall two years ago, and I asked him why Kel Brook, uh, if he were dedicated like Floyd Mayweather, because Floyd Mayweather and Carl Froch are my uh, my favourite fighters, of my generation. Yeah. yeah? And he's told me that Kel Brook smoked and he wasn't dedicated. Now, I watched a video on IFL saying you need your family with you I'm not, and you need good people around you. When, when Kel Brook asked Dominic Ingle if he could be around him, he, he, he said he couldn't do it because of the pandemic. I'm not being funny. I bet Kel Brook's paid for Dominic Ingle's house. Would you agree with that, Russell? Well, he sold it to Kid Gallagher. Yeah, oh, well, that kid, that in that tennis house in Sheffield. Yeah, but I'm not here to talk about how. I know, we're not talking about boxing, uh, no. Is it? no, no, no. I just want to ask you about boxing. Right. Anyway, I, I'm not a betting man, but if I had to put any money, I'd put me outside money on Pulev because 
when Anthony Joshua gets it, I think he's a fantastic fighter at coming forward. But you've got to have all the ingredients. And in boxing, my opinion is on the ingredients. I think the chin comes first, then wind, and then skills third. And I just think that Pulev, if he catches Joshua again... I hear you, him. mate. You must come closer to your microphone. Because uh, Pulev, if he eats Joshua, I think he'll hurt him. And it was a good point what you said about Andy Ruiz. It were a, it was a boxer's performance against Andy Ruiz, but he run all night and he was gun shy, wasn't it? Yeah. He didn't want to get... He didn't want to... He didn't want to get in range with him because he knew he could hurt him in range. Now, and that's why I think Tyson Fury will beat Joshua. Because Tyson Fury, to me, is like elastic, man. His arms and his footwork, at best I've seen it everywhere. He's best on his feet at everyweight division since probably Muhammad Ali. And he's an 18-stone man, Russ. He's best what? Best heavyweight boxers I've seen on his feet, Tyson Fury, how he moves for his size yeah. in a long time. Would you agree with me? Maybe. Maybe. He showed that against Vlad, didn't he? Yeah. I know he run all night, but he did what he had to do to win. Vlad nearly caught him in 11th round in that fight. Uh, he come on strong in 11th round, uh, Klitschko, because he knew he was fighting. But uh, I think Fury is a brilliant boxer, a uh, phenomenal boxer. And we'll go on to uh, what somebody taught. Dave Allen, and I've got an acquaintance who's in boxing, yeah, and he told me he'd been speaking to Dave Allen, who sparred with Tyson Fury, yeah. And he said, Tyson Fury's got no power. He can't punch. That's what this man said to me. I don't know if it's true, but I'm not being funny. I think Tyson Fury is underrated as a puncher. I know he, he boxes a lot, but he can't punch when he gets in range. He chooses not to take risks. Well, I know your friends, you if you're here, is a fantastic fighter, the same as what you were saying about Peter. I watched that Savannah Marshall fight and uh, you could see the blueprint that Savannah had. You could see she'd be training with, with Peter because her lateral movement were a bit like you is in Tyson's. It was fantastic. Savannah's had to start from the beginning, aren't she, as a pro? And, and they've laid the foundations now and they're working through different programmes. Oh, but can't you tell Peter's been working with Russell? Well, obviously, yeah. yeah I think I think for a woman, I think she won't hear this thing to like a man a fighting to how a man fights that I've seen in women. Katie Taylor's good at coming forward and getting therapy out, but when she gets tested and it's back and she blow and she in later rounds. Like, we'll go on to this Kate, this Katie Taylor thing. I watched it at weekend. You met your friend Bean was saying she's once in a lifetime. I'm not being funny. Carl Froch told on the first pursuit fight, Carl Froch was the only commentator that stated facts. She lost the fight. Yeah? She is a good fighter, Russell. But we'll, I've got some uh, other questions on women's boxing after we've gone off the heavyweight division. Anyway... We'll go back, stay on heavyweight division, and we'll go on to Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, glove gate. What do you, what's your opinion on all this with gloves? Nah, it's like, you should move on, Johnny, and just let it go, accept his defeat and move on. Take it on chin like a man, yeah? Well, Great think. performance, but you've got to agree with me on this, Russell, here. This is my opinion on the matter. Deontay Wilder, didn't look the same fighter that night than what he did first fight. I don't know if it got to him in the press conference, conferences, but Deontay Wilder, it looked like he were on sedatives to me. Well, we'll see when they fight next year, won't we? Yeah, well, I put a comment on your channel about what you said two weeks ago, uh, say, stating that Shelley, Shelley is a promoter We'll be taking it to court, and you were hundred percent right, Russell. Hundred percent right, mate. Thank you. And I put that on your channel. Wait, can you still see me, mate? Yeah, I can see you. You've got the same jumper as what I've got. This is me, Freddy Krueger, mate. This is a car. I say, my face is like a car crash. On this, yeah. it's the first time I've ever been on the internet. I'm making my debut. I feel like. I'm late for Crown Court, and ju uh, first time I come on, I couldn't get on, and it, it was like I was late for Crown, but I've arrived now, and I'm glad to see you in person and speak to you.
I'll have to throw my jumper now. <laughs> you are. I'll have I to got this last year. Now. I got this last year. People, people have been on about this jumper for time, yeah. But I like to be eccentric. Yeah, it's not wrong with that. <laughs> I like to be different to everybody else. But yeah, what you're laughing at, man? I've got one of them, but I, it's going to bend when I get on. <laughs> well, oh. right listen. Then, uh, what else do you want to talk about, uh, Sean? Right, my next question is women's boxing in the card at weekend. This is what I was going to speak to you about. Right. Don't get me wrong. You, people can call me a chauvinist pig here or so, but... Women's boxing, you've also stated yourself that there's only a few boxers out there in women's division that are up tight for it. For Eddie Hearn to put a show on, we are women, yeah? People could call me sexist, but I love sport. It's same as when you watch football. My friend said to me last year, watching Women's World Cup, I couldn't get into it, Russell. You ain't got that excitement. You ain't got that testosterone, yeah? And I'm sorry if people can call me sexist here, but... There's always a place for women's boxing, best versus best. I'm looking forward to what you are, Savannah against Clarissa Shields. If That'll happens. be a great fight. But I don't think there's a place in women's boxing for a full card. I think that, to put them on undercard, yeah, Russell. But not full cards. Luckily, last week it was on Sky for nothing, the women's boxing. And I watched it, so it was all right. But the state of women's boxing... Like you said, there might be 10, 10 decent women boxers that we know about out there, and, and they're all mismatches. It's a bit like British fighting, really. There's a lot of mismatching. It's like Champions League teams playing conference-level teams. I like watching Champions League, Russell, in boxing. Sorry. Uh, to speak now, yeah? Right. I think if you watch my, my channel, you'll, uh, you'll see... Uh, what we've spoke about, because uh, a lot of this stuff that you've brought up, we, we have spoke about, I know you've been waiting to get on, but thing is, if that's a world title opponent, Katie Taylor's opponent, Terry Arthur's opponent, if they're world title challengers, what, uh, <laughs> what, what is Southern area level, what's English level, what, what would that be? Would that be a sort of school dinner lady fighting another school dinner lady? I don't know, but they're on, they're on they're on they're not on good money, are they? So you know what I mean. So you can get the cards over the line, but I don't want to hear about all oh, this. I'm a champion for women's boxing. No, he's a champion for the numbers adding up because they're counted by nature. They're counted by nature, and for the numbers to add up, they've got. I like. I'd like to see uh, rankings of women's boxing, but I'm not really that into it that much. We'd have gone to, into it that depth. But I can't see there being a, a good stable of women's fighters, Russell, out there, yeah? I'm going to speak now. You're not going to cut yeah, in? Yeah, Right, OK. Right, well, what we're saying basically is he wants to get the cards out there and make the numbers add up. You see where I'm coming from? Yeah. If the numbers don't add up and he's losing money on the shows, that's when there's a problem. That's why fights are not getting made. You see where I'm coming from? Because they've got to, they've got no gate revenue. Now, how, how idea normally works, it is, it usually takes the gate. Or yeah. yeah. Eddie's all about safety and paper, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Safety and paper, he protects his fight. All the questions that... you got. Other questions I've got. Uh, I'd, could you uh, give me a in last decade uh, your best five fights? Best five fight? What well, I've been to myself or what I've watched? What I've watched, and then I'll give you mine. What I've watched? Uh, the two Frotch ones. That's in mine, but only one. Groves. Uh, Frotch Boutte. Great performance. Uh, yeah. Vladimir Joshua. I did, yeah, that's that. That was going to be on my uh, list, but and there's another one. 
Uh, I thought the Floyd Mayweather one with Maidana, the first one were good. Close fight, Russell, close fight. His biggest test to date. Well, I thought Castillo was his biggest test. Oh, what? I thought Castillo beat him first time. Yeah, I did. That, the Mexican in the first fight, yeah. He was tough, though, wasn't he? Yeah, he was, well, yeah. He brought another Mexican that took him uh, away. That's when he was pretty by that and not money, innit? Yeah. He was the, best, the best debut I've ever seen, well, off maybe, and the world title fight with that General Hernandez. That's the first time I ever took notice of him. And, and, and I thought that he was pound for pound then. I mean, I heard a story that before he even turned pro, he was sparring the guy who beat Julio Cesar Chavez for the first time, Frankie Lando. Won he 89-0, and, and then Frankie Lando beat him, didn't he, Chavez? Well, I heard Mayweather was schooling Frankie, Gab Frankie, Frankie Rando back then, before he even turned pro. Now, that's how good Mayweather were. But what's your, what's your top, top five fights, uh, Sean? First one has got to be... Uh... Now the five, it's got to be Carl Froch against uh, George Groat's first fight. That's when I took her away that he was a mule and a throwback. And I realised that he had probably the best chin I've ever seen in boxing. That was my first one. Because yeah. Russell, when he took some therapy, when he knocked him down, Carl Froch got up, he tensed his back, he blew through his nose as he did, and he just got on with it and then punished him. It was a late stoppage by Howard. I mean, it was a... Early stoppage by Howard Foster, but when a fighter's out on his legs like that and he's living, he's out of wind, he's only going to get concussed, isn't he? Maybe stopped a fraction early, but he turned away, didn't he? Oh, he turned away and he grabbed him and held him away. My second fight is Chocolatito Gonzalez against Inouye, because Inouye went and took a belt off a champion that was 46-0. And Chocolito Gonzalez was some fighter. I watched most of his fights on Box Nation. The third one has got to be for skills. It's got to be Floyd Mayweather against Canelo. They said yeah. Canelo were young and immature, but he fought Shane Mosley before that. He was 40 and 0. And Mayweather just did a master class of the performance. I think he made him look like a boy that night. Yeah. Let me just find this piece of paper. That was my third one. My fourth one was Timothy Bradley against Ruslan Prevetnikov. That was some war. And then my fifth one was uh, Pacquiao Marquez. The last fight, only because I watched all of the fights. And... Uh, it was a good round before it, and when he knocked him out, the second round, I just fit, thought I put it on an even playing field. Yeah. Great fight. Yeah. Right, we'll go back on to heavyweight, what I've missed off. What, who do you think's winner of Dubai St. Joyce? Uh, I've met Dubois, the favourite, uh, but I think it's a pick and fight, and it's a good fight, but I've just edged the, towards the fresher guy, the younger guy. I got saying 55 against 45. Yeah, yeah. But the winner's going to get us. Joyce has fought us, obviously, in I mean, it World Boxing Series, didn't he? Yeah. And I, did, I think he, did, a, I think he did, did well against us, didn't you? Well, look, this is how I look at it, right? I thought who schooled him, personally. That's my... He did, he did school him, but he did hold his own with him, Russell. Well, I don't know about that. I just, I just felt that Usyk was too much for him. And I think that's a gauge that people can use for Usyk if he ever fights Joshua. That's my opinion. So. Yeah, and I think I think Usyk should probably beat Joshua, but I don't think he'll beat Tyson Fury because Tyson Fury is just a freak of a man. Where he's so big, so tall, he's got elastic hands, and he's good on his feet like us. Who is Usyk? Can he take a shot? His name is. Sorry. Can Tyson take a shot? Well, Tyson took a shot against Wilder, biggest ma uh, biggest punch in heavyweight division's history. Answer that, man. And he got back up. But uh, I've been watching interviews with Dave Allen where he hit him in sparring. He said he concussed him. 
don't get me wrong, the Ukrainian can punch. But Tyson Fury's hard to hit. Well, they say Wilder's technically crap, don't they? But he's dropped Tyson. Oh, he's te he is technically crap, but he's got an equaliser. Look when he fought Luis Ortiz in that fight before he was losing. Yeah, but he dropped him. He dropped him, didn't he? Both yeah, times. yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Right, we'll go up heavyweights. If you could make a dream matchup in boxing from the past, who would it be? Uh, Ali against Mike Tyson. Maybe, yeah. Mine would have to be uh, Joe Calzaghe against Cal Froch. Yeah. Because they both had fantastic engines. I watched both documentaries on them. Carl Froch was so dedicated, but also Joe Carzaghi was dedicated, running up them Welsh hills. But I'd just like to see the fight because Calzaghi was busy with his hands, but they both had granite chins and Froch had, Froch had I think Froch had, they say he slapped Joe Calzaghi, but Froch had heavy hands. Don't you agree with me? Yeah. Right. Uh, what did you think uh, to Terence Crawford against Kel Brook? You have, I know you said it to a lot of people on the channel before. I'm late. I should have come on on Monday. You could. I just, I just think that uh, I think it, it was it was a shell of, shell of a man getting in the ring for the cash out, and I'll stand by that. And all them people that weren't saying that were all his mates. And all them people. Yeah, I agree like, with that, Russell. All them people that are saying Kel Brook should move up to one five four, I think they should hang their heads in shame. It's only because they want to hang around uh, somebody of that status and be paid and be on the scene. That, that's my opinion anyway. I, I thought Eddie Hearn spoke out a turn on IFL saying, well, there's the BP Smith fight if he wants it, blah, blah, blah. Why, why, how could any TV company any manager, any trainer, any promoter, any strength and condition nutrition men, any any of your family, any of your friends ever want you to fight again after that? Oh. Oh. Listen, would you agree with this point to me, Russell, what I'm going to come up with? Go on. You mentioned on your channel not long back there is, he's, he's a robotic fighter, Kelbrook. I agree with that. If he hits his straight lines, he's Eastern European. He's got that style. He couldn't fight on back foot. Minute Terence Crawford switched to southpaw, he didn't know what to do. And he hit him. And I noticed since the Golovkin fight, once he got hit in, the, in his eyes, uh, his, his, his eyes started flickering. And they did against, if you watch against Crawford when he hit him, his eyes started flickering against the same. And my point is that since the Golovkin fight, he's never been the same fighter. They threw him into shark-infested waters and he got hurt and he never come back the same. But I, my other opinion is, what Dominic Ingle told me, in this game, you've got to be 100% dedicated. I've heard you going on about Frotch. He had, an, he had a notebook and you're going on about these strength and conditioning coaches. I'm 100% behind you. You can go on internet now and read about nutrition. You can get a Fitbit watch in a blender. So the, I wonder how much uh, Greg Marriott were paid off Kel Brook for being his nutritional coach. Do you think he would have, it's got to be, over a 10 week, it's got to be a grand a week, hasn't it? I'm not really interested in them. I'm not, but I'm, not I'm just thinking how much they are they making a living when, when fighters shouldn't have to pay for it when they can do it all the same. I watched what? a documentary on Rocky Marciano. He had steak, as you'd say, steak. He had steak every day, yeah? So we're going off key here, right? This is how I look at it, and you've heard what I said last night. Kelbrook probably needs to be reminded when to eat and, and have it all prepared for him and all that. I don't know, but why why can't you just take charge of your own career? I mean, I don't, I don't like to revert back to this, but, you know, your Clinton Woodsers, Robin Reeves, Frotchers. People like that one, I know personally. They all they all did their own food and, and, and cook cook at it at the right time. You treat it as a job. It's not a holiday camp. Fiorentina Ventura 
is it to me is an holiday camp. He should be in Sheffield up here doing his ill runs. Yeah, I camp. agree with you. I agree with you. It's all about dedication, being it cold and running high in cold we survive. Listen, they they go up to Big Bear in America for a reason, don't they? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Are you gonna stop butting in now when I'm talking? Because you keep butting in when I'm trying when I'm on a roll. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to tell a story here, and you're like you're jumping in. I'm you know just what I mean? what it, it's my debut into it. I'm a bit flustered. All right, no problem. A bit anxious, and uh, it, on, I'm not a bit agitated. My nickname's the Dripping Tap. Yeah, it fucking is. <laughs> you hey, you fucking rude, bad you, mate. There's no old bad. Right, I watched an interview the other day. On Josh Warrington's dad, go on about levels, and he was saying uh, on about fighters that you should always what a what a point he come out with that Sean, I forgot I can't pronounce his second name, but what he says fighters should always be in condition, like you says about Carl Froch, in between camps. These elevator fighters that are going up and down, up and down, up and down. Ricky Atten will one. Got fun out in America. Kel Brook were one. Got fun out in America. I wouldn't want to see it, but I think Billy Joe Saunders has won himself. I'm a bit disappointed that Billy Joe Saunders didn't take Canelo fight because he said it were on short notice. In my eyes, you've got to try and stay young and be invincible all the time as a boxer. I'm not a professional boxer, Miss M. But like you just said, you've got to be. You've really got to be dedicated. And it's only a short career, Russ, 10, 15 year. You've got to not drink. Floyd Mayweather was a perfect example. He didn't drink or smoke. Carl Frotch, what say? Yeah? Now, what my point is, when you get to these levels at World and you go to America, if there's something missing in your tank, come here, Carl, what a perfect example with his chin. If you get to America and there's something missing out of them three main ingredients in boxing, you always get fan art. I think Billy Joe Saunders has done fantastic against Canelo because I watched a lot of fake Canelo. In my honest opinion, I thought Lara did really well and probably deserved a win. I know he run all night, but I'd have liked to see Billy Joe fake Canelo because this Callum Smith fight that's coming up, Callum Smith, he fights a bit like... Uh, the Russian who he's just lost against, Kobilev, facing straight lines. There's no lateral movement. And I think it's a drawn out conclusion as it gets late at round. Smith will try and box him, but he'll get Canelo walking down and knock him out. I think uh, Beefy Smith did fantastic for a couple of rounds against Canelo when he had him on ropes, but it's when he started gaining him back. Yeah, yeah. Listen, everybody's got a plan till they get it, haven't they? Of course they have. That's why I'm saying my, my main ingredients in boxing is your chin first, then wind, and then skill sec uh, third. And yeah. that's why I think Joe Calzaghi and Carl Froch got that way. Like, I used to think Cal Zaghi was the greatest uh, English fighter until I started watching this channel. And I've watched the Robin Reed Carl Zaghi fight, and I did think he lost. And really, when you think about it, and you mentioned the competition and the facts with Carl Froch and all world champions, he fought. He fought some hard people, Carl Froch. And Carl Zaghi, he was uh, he was promoted right. Where Carl Froch, like when you're on a go on about Mick Hennessy, you never see Mick Hennessy on YouTube, do you? No. He wants. He must be a purest boxer, fa boxing fan like me. I just want to see. Elite against elite. These elite fighters, when they come up against each other, perfect example, Triple G against Canelo. They, are, they all have the ingredients. And usually when these fights, it usually comes down to win, doesn't it? When they've both got skills and a chin. You want me to answer that, yeah? Yeah. Right, which, which part? <laughs> you want me to answer the part about Mick Hennessy? Yeah. yeah. Right. Mick Hennessy is a boxing promoter, right? His job to promote the fights. You get, if you've got TV, he's going to promote you. 
But if a fighter wants other interest in his career, meaning commercial, it's up to the manager of the fighter to deal with that. Now, Carl managed himself after three years. So when he started at the big time, Carl, in my opinion, should have got a commercial person involved and dealt with that. But Eddie Earn has all them connections, doesn't he? And they, they can deal with things like that and put you into situations where you can get a few quid and top up your pension and that. Mick's not like that. Mick's a promoter. Mick's good at finding talent. You know, Frotch, Yui Fury, Tyson, Darren Barker. The Eubank turned pro with him as well. Many Nick, doors, Nick. people like that. Savannah Marshall. Oh, I think some other turn pro with Mayweather for one fight, didn't you? But the point I want to make is that it's up to the fighter if they want commercial interest. Because Mick's a promoter. He, he's not going to go out and do a deal with Knight for you, is he? Or Gola or... No, no. His job's to promote boxing fights, isn't it? Eddie Earn can put you in touch with people at Matchroom will deal with other things. That's why Matchroom is an attractive offer for fighters nowadays. So, and what were the other what were the other question about chins? Calvary. Sorry? Calvary. Yeah. Right. We, we know when you're asking me questions, sure. I'm not having a go at you. Try and keep it short and then I'll answer them. Because you, you you're reading six yeah. and seven questions, aren't you? I'm but switching I, lanes, mate. I'm moving too fast, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. If you want to ask me about Frotch and Carl Zaggy, in 2007, when Frotch beat Robin Reed, you were number one. Right? Then the man, it, it'd been number one a while, and then the mandatory started. Joe Calzaghi took that mandatory to the last day, the 270th day before he vacated. But the talks were ongoing for 270 days. I know that because I heard. But I the whole other story is, it looked like they were going to fight, and then Joe went and fought. Uh, Hopkins and Jones didn't he fought Hopkins first didn't even get paid for that fight allegedly and he ended up in court with Frank Warren Carl ended up fighting should have fought Dennis Inc and he didn't he fought Albert Rabaki then he fought Pascal John Pascal who yeah. was the number two guy my argument is this and all them Carl Zaggy fans can have a go at me all they want in 2007 to 2000 end of 2008 when the fight should have happened Carl Zaggy were there for the taking he were there for Frotch to beat him. Maybe at both at the peaks, he maybe might out points, Carl. Maybe yeah, I agree. But as regards then, he were there for the taking. And him getting dropped twice, he got dropped twice, didn't he? In uh, in, in, in the Jones and the Hobson's fight in the first round. Uh, Carl would have jumped at him. Two seconds, I think something's at the door. We've got car keys. Yeah, two seconds. Let well, me we'll just give this kid my car keys because I'm on the car bouncing next door. Sorry about that. Can I just give a big shout out to Eastwood Autos? Thank you very much for the free car wallet. 
You know that looking after your neighbours. Right, go on, you were saying about Frotch Calzaghi. Uh Frotch Calzaghi, I just think it'd have been a fantastic fight, Russ. Because the both are granite chins and the both are great engines. Now that's what I call an elite fight. And I'm just yeah. glad, I'm just so sad we did we missed it. Yeah, I am. You ain't got to apologise to me, mate. I have been butting in, mate. You're okay. You are? You ain't got to apologise to me. I have been butting in. I ain't got to apologise? No, for being late where I've been butting in. I'm for being late? Bit... I would have been late. No, when you went outside then. You come back oh, and you said... Well, I'm... I'm trying to spin about four plates here. I know, mate. I know. You came fucking cheeky on my channel. I'm not getting cheeky, Ike. Listen, I can see you. Listen, I don't want to get cheap. I just want friends in box. I don't want enemies. Go on. I've got enough of them in life. Right. I want you, uh, if it's possible, your favourite weight division, Russ. Pardon? What's your favourite weight division? Favourite weight division? Well, it's not super middleweight no more. I think that's pony. Uh, favourite weight division, I'd say, is light heavyweight and heavyweight. Well, you see, I, I've got to disagree with that. I like uh, smaller fighters because you get a bigger punch output. I like light. I used to like lightweight to, to super middleweight. I agree with you on the super middleweight. It's gone, it's gone dog shit. So, pardon me, French. But my favourite weight division in boxing is, at minute, is lightweight and welterweight. Yeah. There's some good fights to be made at welterweight, elite against elite. And there's some fantastic fights at lightweight. And this is my next question. Linares has just called out Mikey Garcia at lightweight. Do you think if Mikey Garcia comes back to lightweight, he devours the division? I think if them two fight, it's a pension fight. They're both shot to bits. Hey, Mikey Garcia shot to bits of Meryl Spence, but in that fight, there were only one good thing that I noticed in that fight. Mikey Garcia can take a good punch. So you say Mikey Garcia is going to come down from 147 to 135? It's a small 147 though, isn't he? He still got it ring at 159 though, didn't he? Wait, 159? I thought, yeah, I thought when I watched you, I'd tell you, I thought, well, it doesn't usually tell you all this. All, it usually just doesn't tell you so the he's way. Going to come, he's got in that ring at 159, and he's going to come down 24 pounds. And that's exactly what Roy Jones had to lose when he got knocked out by Tarver. Yeah. So I don't know. He's... Look, fighters nowadays are all scrambling for pay, aren't they? All these people that have been world champions, they all want to go again, don't they? Because they're, what they're going to do is they're not, they're not going to get a job as brain surgeons, are they? It's all they've ever known. They're all 35-year-old or 32. It looks like they're washed up. He's washed up, Mikey Garcia. And if you remember my video from August 2018... I said that Mikey Garcia loses against Josh Taylor and I got destroyed. If you've got yeah. all you Porky followers, go check that video out, August 2018. I told you all, I shook up the world. And they all said Josh Taylor were crap. Well, Josh Taylor's undefeated. And look at Mikey Garcia now, scrambling for a few quid. He moved up to well to wait for money, I think. The old Russ. Oh, well, that's what they're in the game for. But it's called price fighting, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, but I think uh, it still have. If he did get down into weight, I do think he's, he'd hold his own, and I'd like to see him fight uh, Lopez. Yeah. That because yeah. Lopez is a big man for weight, isn't he? Yeah. Two seconds. Hello. <sighs> right, just a troll. Go on, go on, next question. Uh, right, my next question is, yeah, how do you rate the Japanese lad? He knew it, he moved for the lad from Doncaster. I think he's very good. I, I watched his fight against Jason, Jason Moran over there and I think his timing's phenomenal. 
I think he's exceptional. I think he's got very good power for his weight, which is rare in that division. Well, you've watched that fight, so you need to come and swap seats for me, don't you? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't know about that. I probably, I probably end up biting my nails and flustered, <laughs> which I'm feeling a bit flustered now. And I agree with what you've been saying about Eddie the Pimp. Did you see Harry were trying to? It was good, like Harry were trying to match, make the two women. He says that the last from Denneby. Forgot. Uh, who just broke it down? What's her name now? Terry Harper. Terry Harper. He says. She can move up five pounds and fake Katie Taylor. Now that would be a good fight. <laughs> yeah, it would for Katie Taylor, wouldn't it? How do you think it'd work out? Do you think she'd dis destroy her? Be a knockout. Think so? Yeah, they'll, they'll leave that one till the very end. Is, is Kate, uh, Terry Harper's team. They're not going to go near her. Forget that fight unless he's pressured into it. They're not going to fight her. Not yet. They're not even going to fight Jonas Ali because she got it. So no, the secret of the game for them is to get money and set themselves up, uh, Terry Harper's team. So I don't think they're going to put Terry Harper near any danger. There's going to be no 50-50 fights. Right, we'll go on to Josh Warrington. Do you think Josh Warrington can be undisputed? Because he's definitely got work ethic. Well, Has every, he got time they say, every time they say Sorry. he's going to get... Every time they say he's going to get beat, he wins, doesn't he? Yeah, mate. He's got good grit and determination, anti Russ. Yeah. He's got a fantastic yeah. engine and he's dedicated. You can see he's, he's got... I can see in Josh Warrington, same dedication as maybe Carl Froch. Yeah. He looks really, he looks really hungry. Big shout but out to Nick Manners. Manners. Big Sorry, shout mate. Out to Nick Manners. Yeah, yeah. That's, do, you do, you know, think, do you know who Nick Manners is? Do you know who Nick Manners is? No, 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 no. Well, you just said, yeah, yeah. You don't know who he is? No, no. He's what? a corner man for Josh Warrington. He works with Josh and Sean O'Hagan. Oh, no, I didn't know that. How are you doing, Nick? Hope you're well, mate. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Hope you're doing well with your gym in Leeds. I forgot what it's called. If you text me, Nick, I'll give it a shout out. Go on, Sean, you were saying. What's your next question? Do you think if he went to a, uh, do you think best fights in America for Warrington, Stevenson and Valdez? Do you think they'd be good fights? Uh, I think Stevenson against Warrington, if he fights, an hard fight for Josh. That would probably be an end, end of his career fight when crowds are back in Leeds. I'd like to see that. But I think if they did fight, I wouldn't make Josh a favourite in that fight. I wouldn't. But I would like to see it. I'd go 50-50. You think because he's probably more experienced. Warrington would be probably more experienced. Well, let's hope he does it. Right, Ross. Next question. Oh. What is your first? Okay. What's your first memory of boxing? First memory of boxing is being in the guy who owns this place as house when I was a kid, and it was Larry Holmes against. Ken Norton, and, and it was a sat, I'll never forget, it was a Saturday afternoon, and it was, I think it was highlights, and they're, they're a big footballing family, the, the kid who owns this, the professional footballers, and the big sporting family, so they always had grandstand, or is it where we sport and stuff like that, and I remember being over there, at their house, one Saturday, Saturday afternoon, and the fight being on, and my second memory, uh, uh, in my own house, was watching... Marvin Agler against Minter a month before my 10th birthday. And I remember, I'll never forget, my mum and dad went to the pub over at Rose and we were sat eating salt and vinegar Walker's French fries, Mars bar and a can of cola. And I were interested in it because they were throwing beer cans at it and my brother weren't really much interested in it. It, it were at Wembley, all, all Supremists were at Wembley and they kicked off, didn't they? Yeah, they did, yeah, yeah. They were and at Wembley that's Stadium. my second memory. And memories after that, I suppose, were watching Frank Bruno and people like that. And I'll never forget the uh, when McGuigan fought Brindrosa <clears> or <throat> Street. Because in them days, you only had like three or four TV channels, didn't you? All Street, where everybody in the house was watching it. <coughs> I watched it with my granddad and my great uncle and my dad. 
as a kid I can go back 14, 15 year old, 14 year old I think. Uh, uh, McGuigan beat him, didn't it? Obviously, to go. It him. were that fight were at Loftus Row, wasn't it? Yeah, Queen's Park right Rangers around, yeah. ground. Uh, there well, are memories that stuck in my head. And other memories, I think, were Frank Bruno just used to blast everybody away, didn't he? And he got beat by uh, Bone Crusher Smith. I remember that. Tim Witherspoon. Fights like that. I remember being living in London when I was a teenager and he fought Mike Tyson then. I remember that fight. Uh, yeah, they're, they're good memories. Very good memories. You always remember where you were for the great fights, don't you? Well, I'll tell you my first memory. I'm, a, similar to, I'm brought up in a pit village, similar to you, and I went for up minor strike, Russ. But I can always remember round about my minor strike. I'm a bit younger than you. Uh, my first memories of boxing, my dad was a very... He was a boxing enthusiast, and he still is to this day. He still gets up at middle at night and watches it. Obviously, he can stream. With this where I live, I can't stream, so he gets it all free and he watches all the fights. But my first memory of boxing, he was a big Roberto Duran fan, my dad. I can remember him having £60 on to beat uh, Sugar Ray Leonard in second yeah. fight, and he was going berserk because he lost his money. But my first memory of boxing was probably... Same as you, it was Barry McGuigan, but it was his title defence after Pedroza and it was a man called Cruz and that's when it, I realised how hard of a sport boxing was. Because in the 15th round he knocked him down and Barry McGuigan were exhausted. And that's when I realised how tough the Mexicans were and how, how good the wind power was. What you have to understand though with that fight is Barry McGuigan fought, fought in 120 degree heat in the middle of a desert. And he's, he's got white skin and he's fighting a Mexican, so it we're all stacked against him, wasn't it? Russ, that's why I'm saying about the fight. He was winning the fight, Barry McGuigan, and he got exhausted. That's when boxing were boxing, when there were 15 round fights. Like when you go on about Carl Frotch, Andre Ward, he fought him in a 15 round fight. I think Frotch had done him in the end because he come on strong for the last three rounds. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You've covered that, you've covered that in this about steroids in boxing. You made a video on it the other day. Just... Right. Uh... Is that it, Sean? No, no. Uh, could I have your top three pound for pound, Russ, please? Top three pound for pound. Crawford. Canelo. That's my number one. Right, Crawford, Canelo, and Usyk. Tyson Fury, fourth, maybe. Well, I, I'd, I'd have it exactly the same as you, but I'd probably put Tyson Fury third because he's probably fought more fights. And Not Usyk defense of the belt yet, though, has he? No, but Usyk has only just moved him to middleweight. He was fantastic at cruiserweight. Usyk's moved into what? Heavyweight, anti, just moved up to heavyweight. They only had two. But Usyk's just dominated at cruiserweight. Oh, I watched it. I watched all his fights. On, on Olympic a, gold, he's won all other stuff in, in amateurs, and he's two and zero as in heavyweight, and he's ready for his world title shot. So you'd have to have Usyk in your top five, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I agree with that. Yeah, and I'm in my top five. Uh, you see, Canelo. I put Canelo third because in my eyes. He's, uh, he lo he's lost three times for me up to now, Canelo. He lost first fight against Golovkin. Second fight, he made him in the middle of the ring, and I think he just did enough to win second fight. But the first fight, I think he lost against Golovkin. I think he lost against Lada and Floyd Mayweather. To say what a stone and a half heavier than Floyd on that night. Floyd just, it was just a boxing ma masterclass. Floyd Mayweather, I've never seen a fighter make it look as easy. Yeah, he could do everything. His defense, like Dominic Ingle, were on IFL saying that Carl Froch, all his reflexes have gone. Mayweather, when he went into defense, his reflexes got better when he was thirty-five. And that's and that's the difference. What I want to get to about dedication, and it's only a small, short career, and that's why you've got to dedicate yourself to your craft and not abuse yourself. Because if you abuse yourself, you'll get found out at top level. 
Yeah. You'd agree with me on that, Rob? Yeah, it's not rocket science, is it? No, no, no. Oh. no uh, your favourite fighter of all time? Crotch, Josh Whale, Ryan Rhodes, uh, Ward, Gassy. Great fights, Ward and Gatties, weren't they? Yeah. Great fights. Mine's it. Uh, Cal Froch, in in the uh, English writer, and Floyd Mayweather, in uh, American fighters. Yeah. Right then, listen, I've got to go now. You've had a fair bit of time on here, haven't we? <laughs> I haven't even start. Sorry, I've just got my toe. I've just got my toe wet in the swimming pool. I haven't dived in because I want to check temperature at water. Yeah, but I've been a bit flustered. I'm sorry if I've come across it. I've no, been no worry about it. But I've got some fantastic more questions. I've seen you on your phone. Anybody who think uh, you're an Asian, uh, answering your phone, selling whiskey and brandy because it's non-stop. Every time I watch your program, your phone's ringing all the time. No. So thanks for having me, Russell. Thanks no for problem. Listen, with me. let me just make a suggestion next time you come on. Try and prepare some material for that day that you know you're coming on. Then we're not going over old ground, are we? Russell, I've built my courage up. I should have come on on Monday. I've built, put these questions, and they're all questions, and everybody that's been on has answered most of my questions, and that's, <laughs> and that's why. How many have you and got I've, left? I've got about another 15. I, if I can, I'll come on another time. Yeah, save it for next time, because you've had over an hour, haven't we, now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, I've, uh, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for putting it for me. No problem. You're a good and I'm not, listen, I hope you realise that I'm not a troll, yeah? Yeah, okay. You're now, not a troll. And I want to uh, tell you one thing that I did over there about trolls. If you put in the Google, trolls, you know what it comes up as? No. Children that were bullied at school. Yeah. People uh, that eat sausage for less than a fiver. All right. All and right. people, and uh, the people, you've got to think like this, Russ. Obviously, you're doing something. You're doing something good because it's it's a fact that only important people get trolled. So keep well, on trucking. <laughs> Keep on trucking, keep up with good work, yeah? Yeah. And I like you as a realist. Your boxing channel's the best thing I've ever seen on the internet. All right. It's fantastic, and I like listening to you because it's not just because you're from around my area, it's because you're real and organic. Yeah. All and right, well, true, mate. Trouble. Thank you like very much for coming on. It's been a like pleasure. I'm not important, before. but thank you. All right. Thanks. Hey, kid, thanks for putting up with me, yeah? Yeah, no problem. You're welcome on another time. All right, just send an email. All right, then. Send an email and she'll she'll uh, she'll get back in touch with you about another time. Yeah. Honest opinion. How do you think I've done, Ross? I think you've, yeah, you've done you've done great. You're a trial, aren't you? You keep with it, Sean. You've done yeah, well. Yeah. Hey, uh, all right, kid. You take care, mate. Bye, bye. Bye, mate. Fucking hell, pal. Scott's been ringing me every fucking two minutes. I'm going to fucking phone him. I put phone down, I'll ring you back, innit? Yeah. Well, that was Sean from uh, Out Pontefract Way. Nice to have him on. We'll have him on again. He's a character. We like characters, boxing hardcores. So, all right. So, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. All right. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And share this video if you've liked it. All right. You take care.